It is now time for a question period. The Leader of Her Majesty's Loyal Opposition. Thank you, uh, Speaker. My, uh, my questions to the Deputy Premier. Before I get to that, I just want to, on um, behalf of the Ontario PC Caucus, extend our, our best wishes to Constable Michael Clarenbeek uh, and Constable Clarenbeek's family. Uh, Constable Clarenbeek, of course, uh, shot uh, at the Brampton Courthouse. He's recovering at the Civic Hospital, and we want to send our best wishes for a speedy recovery to this Ontario hero. To the uh, Deputy Premier, it's, it's been three years since the Liberal government got mired in this controversy around the cancellation of gas plants that cost taxpayers over a Order. billion dollars. The most troubling allegations have now arisen as of Thursday, when the Ontario Provincial Police anti- Stop the clock, please. The Minister of Immigration and Citizenship will come to order. The Minister of the Environment will come to order, and the Minister of Finance will come to order. Please finish. The OPP anti-racket squad indicated that an outsider Question, was please. given access to destroy criminal evidence, a criminal activity to destroy evidence. I, I share the frustration of the outrage of Ontarians about this allegation. I want to know why Premier Wynne or you as Deputy Premier did nothing to prevent the destruction of evidence. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, thank you, Speaker, and uh, I too want to uh, to offer uh, wishes for a very speedy recovery to Officer Mike Clarendeek and his family. Uh, speaker, this uh, this has reminded us of the bravery of our frontline police officers, who every day put uh, uh, their lives on the line to protect us. So uh, we wish a speedy, speedy recovery, Speaker. Uh, uh, speaker, I, I will be referring the supplementary um, to the government house leader, but I, I do want to address the issue of, um, of the Premier's availability today. She has, uh, is uh, doing her job as Premier. She is on her way to Sault Ste. Marie. She's got a number of events there, including a very important announcement at Algoma College. Uh, she's been available multiple times over the weekend. Uh, she was in Lindsay on Friday. She uh, was with MPP Wong to uh, uh, visit answer. the residents at Shepherd's Village. She's been available all weekend long to answer questions, and uh, I will look forward to the supplementary speaker. Thank you. <laughs> supplementary. Well, I hope, Speaker, I can have your assistance. If the, if the Premier is not able to answer questions today, I certainly hope the Deputy Premier will answer those on the Premier's behalf and not refer them. Um, you know, the Premier and I actually had a meeting, Premier Wynne, on January 28th in, in her office. I assumed I was speaking with uh, Premier Wynne on January 28th. She conducted herself that way in, in the Premier's office. And she actually asked me to back off on pursuing contempt charges in committee. Uh, I now understand why. I understand, too, that you attended a caucus meeting on January 30th of this year, 2014, and Premier Wynne ran that caucus meeting, not Dalton McGuinty. Can you confirm that Premier Wynne was in charge? She ran the caucus meeting on January 30th. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, let's, let's start at the beginning. Thursday, we learned of some very serious allegations. They are allegations, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, if true, they are very serious, and we take them uh, very seriously on this side of the House. But the fact of the matter, Mr. Speaker, if members take time to review the document which was tabled in court, they will learn that these are allegations which pertain to uh, the period in which Premier McGuinty was Premier and to his former Chief of Staff. They make no reference, Mr. Speaker, to an involvement by the current Premier, Mr. Speaker. The current Premier has explained that, and despite that, Mr. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition continues with baseless accusations, which are, quite frankly, Shame. below an insult to the office that he holds. And, Mr. Speaker, we look to him to remedy the situation, Answer. Mr. Speaker, and to stop playing politics with this very serious matter. Final supplementary. You know, uh, again, Speaker, these are um, the most serious of allegations of the criminal destruction of evidence in the Premier's office around the gas plant scandal. The member from Glengarry, and Prescott, Russell, come to order. If the Premier is unable to answer these questions today, despite knowing these questions would be at the top of the list, the Deputy Premier should do so. Taxpayers are entitled to very direct answers to simple, straightforward questions. 
If you argue that Premier Wynne was unaware of what was happening under her Minister of Aboriginal Affairs, she come was in charge, then that shows that she was grossly incompetent and extraordinarily negligent. So either she was complicit or she willfully looked the other way, neither of which qualify her to be Premier of the province of Ontario and get us under the mess that we're in. So let me ask again the Deputy Premier, which is it? Was she involved or did she simply intentionally look the other way? Thank you. Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, this is, this is very disappointing. The Leader of the Opposition has no interest in the facts. Mr. Speaker, the documents that were tabled in court make it clear that the accusations, they remain accusations, Mr. Speaker, we all have to be very careful, deal with the former Chief of Staff to Premier McGuinty and have nothing to do with the current Premier. You know, Mr. Speaker, let's try to get our facts straight here. The Leader of the Opposition stands up and talks about a meeting with the incoming Premier before she became Premier in her office. Mr. Speaker, that was in the office of the interim, excuse me, the acting or the incoming Premier, Mr. Speaker. That had nothing to do with Premier McGuinty. McGuinty's uh, uh, office. Premier McGuinty was Premier until February the 11th, and the accusations which are outlined, the accusations which have not been proven, Mr. Speaker, involve his former Chief of Staff. It is time, Mr. Speaker, that the Leader of the Opposition, he is debasing yes, his office, acknowledge these facts, and remove Mr. Speaker from his website and stop repeating Thank allegations you. which are totally baseless. Thank you. New question. Leader of the Opposition. You know, again, back to the um, the acting premier. Um, facts are, are stubborn things, and I met with uh, Premier Wing um, in her office when she conducted herself Order. as premier. Order. January. Excuse me. The Minister of Finance will come to order a second time. Please carry on. Um, facts are facts, and I'm going to hold you accountable on behalf of taxpayers in the province of Ontario to get the bottom of the scandal. She conducted herself as Premier. The House Leader now says, well, she was something called acting Premier. She also says she was the Premier designate. She says she's leader of the Liberal Party. Uh, enough of the dissembling, enough of the misinformation. The fact of the matter was Kathleen Wynne was in charge. Excuse me. Please, please withdraw. Thank you. Kathleen, the fact of the matter is Kathleen Wynne was in charge. Her, she was at the wheel. This is as much Kathleen Wynne scandal as Dalton McGuinty's. The criminal destruction of evidence, the allegations, Question. took place February 6th and March 20th. So, come clean. Was she responsible or was she willfully negligent, both of which disqualify her? Thank you. The uh, Minister of Training Colleges and Universities will come to order. Deputy Premier. Government House Leader, sir. Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, the, the meeting in question between the Leader of the Opposition and Kathleen Wynne was held in the transition office, not the Premier's office, right. located here in this building, Mr. Speaker. I think it's time that we get our facts straight. Mr. Speaker, there were documents that were filed in court last Thursday, Mr. Speaker, and those documents made it clear that this is an allegation, unproven allegation, Mr. Speaker, against the former Chief of Staff of Premier McGuinty. Mr. Speaker, there have been a number of third parties who have taken a look at these documents. Let me tell you what they're saying. The Ottawa Citizen, March 28th, quote, trail of evidence and gas plant probe ends before Wynn's government starts. Ottawa Citizen, same day, March 28th, quote, detectives have found no evidence that any and computers sir? in Premier Kathleen Wynne's office Ready were accessed. Toronto Star, March 29, 2014, a close reading of the 111 pages of OPP documents provides no hint yet Thank of you. any impropriety when Wynne was Premier. Office. I'll, I'll refresh your memory of another meeting that took place. Minister of Energy, come to order. It wasn't just me who met with Kathleen Wynne as Premier. On January 31st, Kathleen Wynne and Dalton McGuinty met with left Minister of Aboriginal Affairs, come to order. Power. On that day, January 31st, Kathleen Wynne took over as Premier designate, which gave the authority to direct government activities. January 31st, she met with Dalton McGuinty and the Lieutenant Governor. She became Premier 
designate. That tells me that she was in charge, that she is responsible, that this scandal has equal responsibility with Kathleen Wynne and Dalton McGuinty. And my question is, why didn't she say no? Why didn't she stop the destruction of evidence related to the gas plant scandal? Question. Isn't that an incredible failure to do a very basic job expected by taxpayers? Thank you. Thank you. Um, just as a reminder to all members, I will uh, say it over and over again, please refer to all members in this place either by their title or by their writing. Thank you. Deputy, uh, sorry, Governor House Leader. Mr. Speaker, the member is opposite accusations. He can repeat them over and over again, but they do not make them true. They are baseless, Mr. Speaker. They are irresponsible, and they demean the very high office that he holds. Mr. Speaker, again. Last Thursday, we learned of a document that was filed in the court. That document contains allegations, unproven, Mr. Speaker, about the former chief of staff to Premier McGuinty, and it outlines a series of activities that happened while Premier McGuinty was the Premier, Mr. Speaker. The Leader of the Opposition can try to turn himself into pretzels and stand here over and over again, Mr. Speaker, saying things which are not accurate, but the fact of the matter is, Mr. Speaker, that the facts speak for themselves. And as the Leader of the Opposition learned yesterday, Mr. Speaker, we have certainly on this side of the Answer. House consulted legal experts as to the action that we may be taking, Mr. Speaker, if he continues Thank in you. this baseless stream of allegations. Thank you. Final supplementary. Well, let's look at um, Kathleen Wynne's record. She initially said that the gap. Excuse me. Title, please. Premier Wynne's record. She said initially the gas plant scandal would cost $40 million. She said that in the House. We found, uh, found it was a billion dollars. Uh, we found out uh, she has the co chair of the Liberal campaign when they ordered the cancellation of the gas plants. She was actually the one who signed the cabinet direction to pay TransCanada whatever it took to make the gas plant scandal go away. That cost taxpayers a billion dollars. No, no, no. She had meetings in her office January 28th with me, January 31st with the Premier, and then on February the 7th, she ordered the Auditor General to do a review of the gas plant file. You say she was in charge February 11th. On February 7th, she was giving orders what? around here. So clearly she was in charge. And if she wasn't, the extraordinary incompetence tells me she's not fit Question. to keep this province out of the mess we're in. Clearly, if we want to get Ontario back on track, it's time to change the team that runs this province and builds our great country. Thank you. Thank you. Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker. I will put the Premier's record up against the Leader of the Opposition's record any day of the week. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, on the one hand, Order. we have a Premier that restruck. Order, please. The member from Simcoe North come to order. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, that restruck the Justice Committee with a broad mandate and broad powers has provided hundreds of thousands of documents to that committee, has appeared twice in front of that committee, and made sure that government members and ministers and staff have also appeared in front of the committee. And what we have from the Leader of the Opposition, Mr. Speaker, who's someone who went on YouTube and said that if he became Premier of the province, that he would cancel the gas plants, Mr. Speaker. We have a Leader of the Party whose candidates Answer. went out and campaigned against the very same gas plants that he's speaking about today, Mr. Speaker, and he will not come clean and acknowledge that very simple yet important fact. New question, the leader of the third party. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, question period is supposed to be a venue for the government to be held accountable. By refusing to face questions today about the Liberal gas plant scandal, the Premier is making a mockery of accountability. New yeah. Democrats will not participate. The member from the Keen Carlton. Typical NDP, when the going gets tough, they get going. That's right. Speaker. All right. Well said. Well said. I even had the Liberal applauding me on that one, Speaker. Uh, speaker, you'll indulge. 
indulge me on a timeline to the Deputy Premier, and I would expect an answer. On January 26, Premier Wynne becomes leader of the Liberal Party. On the 28th, she meets with the leader of the official opposition, asking to uh, stop the gas plant probe. On the 30th of January, she leads the Liberal caucus in a caucus meeting. On January 31st, she meets with the Premier Dalton McGuinty to assume leadership as Premier-elect. On February 4th, an IT services uh, uh, cabinet office officer provides David Livingston's executive assistance with a global administrative password. On February 6th, Laura Miller, deputy chief of staff, has computer access. From February 7th, uh, she, she then has her computer's access. And between February 6th and March 20th, when Premier Wynn is Premier of Ontario, there is, a, there is a access to a wipe 40, 24 hard drives clean. On Thursday, March 27, 2014, I asked them if we could have Premier Wynn's Thank you. hard drive. She refused to give it. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy <laughs> Premier, Government House Leader. Uh, Mr. Speaker, let me. Let me ask the honourable member to recall another date. In fact, the leader of the opposition remembered wow. February 11th, Mr. Speaker, when Premier Wynne was sworn in as Premier in this very chamber with the leader of the opposition present. Yes. Fact of the matter is, Mr. Speaker, this dog doesn't hunt. February 11th was when Kathleen Wynne became Premier. But, Mr. Speaker, let's go beyond that, Mr. Speaker, to look Member at the from document Oxford, that come to was order. released that was made public last Thursday, the court document. It makes very clear, Mr. Speaker, that there are allegations, serious allegations, not proven, Mr. Speaker, against the former Chief of Staff, Mr. Livingston, of Premier McGuinty, about actions that took place under his watch. Mr. Speaker, I can continue quoting the Globe and Mail, March Answer. 31, 2014. There is nothing in the documents that suggests any records were deleted after Ms. Wynne was Thank sworn you. into office on February 11, 2014. Thank you. Supplementary. <coughs> theory by the government House Leader and, in fact, the Premier is she is expecting us to believe that no one was Premier of Ontario for six weeks. Exactly. There's not an Ontarian out there that believes that. They believe that Kathleen Wynne was Premier of Ontario on the, the February uh, 11th. They believe that the computers were accessed during that period of time. If the Premier is so clean on all of this, why has she not responded to my question of last Thursday asking whether her hard drive was compromised? tampered with or deleted. She hasn't done that because she either doesn't know or it has been. She needs to come clean. Will your government do it on behalf of the taxpayers of this province? Thank you. Crusader, please. Crusader, please. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, maybe we need uh, a little bit more money for opposition research. As to the honourable member's question, Mr. Speaker, I direct her towards the court document which has been uh, uh, fueling her tirades over the past few days, where it outlines, Mr. Speaker, those computers which uh, uh, it is alleged were tampered with, Mr. Speaker, and it's very clear that uh, the uh, for, uh, current Premier's name appears nowhere, Mr. Speaker. No, the current Premier's computer was not involved with this. The court documents are very clear. And the honourable member to be engaging in this sort of baseless allegation, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker these drive-by smears is really an insult to the office that she holds as an opposition critic. Mr. Speaker, on February 11th, Premier Wynne became Premier. Before that, Premier McGuinty was Premier, and the court documents make very clear, as the media reports have outlined, that the allegations in question are about his Thank former pre Chief of Staff, Mr. Livingston. Thank you. New question. The member from Mississauga, Brampton South. Training, colleges and universities. The city of Brampton is one of the fastest growing communities in Canada. This means that more and more young people are graduating from our high schools and deciding about their future. I strongly believe that post-secondary education is vital for the success of young people in this ever-changing competitive world. Therefore, the creation of a university campus in an underserved area like Brampton is very important because that provides an opportunity for our young people to get a high-quality post-secondary education closer to their homes. And I'm very passionate about the possibility of locating a university campus that can better serve the needs Question. of students in Brampton. Can the minister tell my constituents how can we bring a new campus to Brampton? 
Minister Trinity College University. The member has been a, a hugely strong advocate in our region for post-secondary education. Our government released its uh, framework for major capacity expansion in December, and on Thursday we put out our request for proposals. We're deeply committed to making sure that the long-term investments necessary to build on the world-class reputation of our post-secondary sector, uh, that our post-secondary sector has earned. We need to plan ahead so that our post-secondary system has the capacity to take that next generation of students. We also know that having a post-secondary institution expand or locate in a community can have a tremendous local economic impact. Interested municipalities will need to work through a university proponent to participate in this RFP. I know the member has a long-standing interest in this RFP, and I'm sure students in her community appreciate that. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, speaker, it's great to hear that the residents of my great riding of Miss Saga Brampton South will have an opportunity to work together to bring a new campus to the city of Brampton. However, I'm sure that the people of Brampton would like to know more about how they can qualify for a campus under the government's policy framework. And I will certainly do everything I can to work with local partners to make that happen. Mr. Speaker, can the minister explain what factors he will be considering when reviewing applications? Thank you, Minister. The process for consideration of our campus uh, capacity our expansion RFP will be transparent and fair for all proponents. A key consideration will be ensuring the expansions take place in regions where student demand and growth is located. 30% of the waiting will go to location. Cost is also critical during these challenging fiscal times. 40% of waiting will go toward affordability for students and taxpayers and value for money. And 30% of waiting will go toward the campus product itself, including local community and economic impacts, promotion of innovation, impact on labor market needs, and alignment with differentiation priorities, among others. Preference will be given to proponents that involve partnerships with colleges. After a decade of record investment in our globally competitive post-secondary education system, we're following Answer. up with further long-term investments to ensure we provide that next generation of students with the quality of education they deserve. Thank you. New question. The member from Nipissing. Thank you, and uh, good morning, Speaker. My question is for the Acting Premier. Uh, there are a lot of similarities between the gas plant scandal and Ontario's latest financial debacle. Your government said the gas plant cancellation would cost $40 million, but it took the Auditor General to tell us it's really $1.1 billion. And now, in the budget, you told us and the financial community that you'll balance by 2017, yet only days before that, your own documents entitled, quote, confidential advice to cabinet, quote, said you had a $4.5 billion gap. You see, I'm sensing a pattern here. During the gas plant scandal, you knew one thing and told the public something different, Remember and now the, you're um, doing the same with Eglinton finance, Lawrence, telling us one thing when you know the opposite to be true. Quite frankly, how Question. can we believe anything you ever say again? Finance. Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, um, we wrote off $40 million as attributed to the cancellation yeah. of that power plant, and that was written off. Yeah. Uh, the Auditor General was asked to review it, and they noted that the relocation of the power plant over the period of 30 years would amount to an additional billion as it regrets to the construction and the continuation of that facility, the investments in transmission, and so forth. The member is now talking about the integrity of the numbers that have been presented. Numbers that the, also the Auditor General has reviewed and confirmed as correct. And now he's saying that we've somehow hidden something that's been out there for public consumption in our fall economic statement. If the member would just read, Mr. Speaker, he would understand exactly where is that place. And the fact that we're making revisions as it relates to the global changes, we're reacting and we're taking the proper steps to meet our targets and balance the books by 2017-18, as he said we would. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you very much. Back to the Acting Premier. Let me, let me compare the gas plant scandal to your financial debacle another way. During the contempt hearings, you turned over 36,000 documents, and a dozen cabinet ministers stood up and declared, quote, you have all the documents. Two weeks later, you reluctantly turned over 20,000 more documents. We learned under oath that were ordered removed Minister, by Liberal Services, come to order, Now, please. come budget time, you announce you're on track 
back to balance the budget by 2017-18. And again, eight cabinet ministers stood up in this legislature and declared, quote, we're on track to balance the budget. Yet your confidential advice to cabinet only days before told you and your cabinet ministers you're not on track to balance. I have a question for you. Why do Liberal cabinet ministers question. continue to stand in this legislature and say one thing when they know the complete opposite to be true? Thank you. You say it, please. You it, please. Thank you. Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, um, we are on track to balance the books by 2017-18. More importantly, four years in a row, we beat our targets. Our, our spending was less than 1% year over year, and we were the only government to actually cut spending last year. We have met our targets. The Auditor General has confirmed them as such. We're taking the steps necessary. And what is true, Mr. Speaker, is that we do have a plan to create those jobs and stimulate economic growth by investing in our economy, not by doing across-the-board cuts that would make it even more difficult for recovery. So we recognize what's necessary. We have also acknowledged that the global marketplace has changed, and Ontario's had to recalibrate to ensure that we stay ahead, and we've led the way. We have more than 180 per cent of those jobs returned to the province of Ontario because of the actions that we've taken and working in collaboration with our stakeholders. We're the leanest government in Canada, the lowest cost government by far from any other government in this, in this country. New question. The member from uh, Scarborough Rouge River. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the new Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Cooperative housing is an important component of Ontario's affordable housing solution. Several cooperative housing units were originally built in the 1970s. The then federal government had worked with the province to ensure that they received federal support. With these agreements, the co ops helped Ontario's most needy by providing rent geared to income subsidies making life more affordable to Ontarians. However, these agreements are expiring and we're quickly approaching the day in 2020 when most of these contracts will end and so will rent geared to income supplements. Two weeks ago, the Closing the, gap, close, closing the house gap, Housing Gap campaign was here at Queen's Park, advocating that our government stand up for these vulnerable Ontarians. Mr. Speaker, through you to the Minister, could he please Question. explain what our government has done to support Ontario's cooperatives and social housing providers. Thank you, Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Thank you, thank you very much, and I'd like to thank the member from Scarborough Rouge River for his advocacy on behalf of those in co-op and social housing. And I want to recognize the hard work and advocacy of a few people, Bud Purvis, Harvey Cooper, Ginny Day, and Sean Gaydon, who came to the legislature to advocate for this very important issue. Our government believes that long-term local solutions are the only way that we can tackle homelessness, Speaker. That's why our government has focused on Ontario's Housing First strategy, which gives priority to finding permanent housing linked to flexible support services. We understand the importance of this. It's why we've invested $3 billion in affordable housing since 2003, more than any government before us. Though we've got more work to do, I was pleased to learn that the former minister met with Councillor Anna Bailao in February to hear their concerns and see how our government could help. I reaffirm, Speaker, our government's commitment to work with the City of Toronto and all housing providers and the federal government to ensure that we have predictable, long-term solutions for Ontario's most vulnerable. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I would like to thank the Minister for the answer. I'm sure my constituents will be pleased to hear our government's commitment to cooperative and social housing. Two weeks ago, the, close, the, the Housing Gap campaign came to Queen's Park. They spoke of their need of funds to continue their investment in capital repairs for Toronto community housing, which will be $2.6 billion over the next decade. They also have asked that we have all parties in this House, stand with our government to continue our call on the federal government to maintain the existing housing stock. stock. They believe that the federal government needs to come back to the table with a long-term, stable source of funding. Mr. Speaker, through you to the Minister, could he please explain what our government is doing to ensure that the opposition and the third party follow our government's lead on calling on the federal government to maintain their funding? Thank you, Minister. Speaker, thank you. Our government has continued, Speaker, to call on our federal partners to join with our government to come up with a stable, long-term solution for homelessness in Ontario. 
That's why, while the former minister urged municipalities at the Roma OGRA conference last month to ask their local members and Minister Kennedy to urge the federal government to come back to the table, and I understand the city of Brantford is doing so. However, unfortunately, like the federal conservatives, Speaker, the third party has been silent, and we can see what's happened here today. Sadly, this is typical for a party whose leader has said that, according to the Toronto Star, has done everything possible to avoid policies on tough issues that require political bravery. While they sat on the sidelines, we've acted over $600 million for affordable housing in Toronto since 2003, 4,700 new units, uh, housing units, repairing over 37 in almost 15,000 homes, with housing allowances and rent subs. There's more to do. This is a societal issue, Speaker, and I hope the third party will finally stand shoulder to shoulder with us to demand that the federal Thank government you. step up. Rep New question, the member from Cambridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the acting premier. We've all heard before the tales of what the premier knew, but to be a fact. She knew the cost of the Oakville cancellations would cost $40 million, despite signing a cabinet document that stated otherwise. She knew the documents requested in committee had been made public before thousands and thousands more were dropped on our desks at the 11th hour. So you excuse the people of Ontario if after a year and a half of being taken for a ride by this premier, we don't accept where she's dropped us off. Either the premier will knew full well what was going on or she was willfully blind to the facts. Acting Premier, can you tell the people of Ontario which is it? Good question. Deputy Premier. Oh. Government House Leader. Mr. Mr. Speaker, Speaker, talk about being blind to the facts. Mr. Speaker, we've all established Member from Prince that Edward February 11th, uh, Kathleen Wynne became Premier of this province. But Mr. Speaker, don't take my word for it. I invite the honourable member to go read the document that was tabled in court. That document made very clear that the accusations, which have not been proven, Mr. Speaker, and I think we all have to be very careful, were about the actions that took place under Premier McGuinty's time as Premier with his former Chief of Staff. The fact of the matter is, Mr. Speaker, again, I can quote media outlet after media outlet, which undertook the analysis of it and came away with the conclusion, Mr. Speaker, that they are engaging in the most baseless kind of character attacks. And as Mr. Speaker, the Premier pointed out in her open letter yes, yesterday, sir. she is taking the steps of consulting legal experts on this. Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, that was a completely unbelievable answer. This government brags about the number of documents handed over when they know full well that the most dam damning documents were deleted or hidden or corrupted or damaged or destroyed by a Liberal strategist's boyfriend. We're worried, Mr. Speaker. We're worried there is no reason for the Premier to come clean with the people of Ontario because the world, in the world of Liberal politics, money talks, especially hush money. Acting Premier, in the real world, when you escort a man to your computer, give him your password and watch him destroy data, you get fired. When Liberal staffer Lauren Remy does it, she gets promoted to Press Secretary of the Minister of Education. And Becky Codd Downey gets promoted as Press Secretary. And Rebecca McKenzie gets promoted to Chief of Staff. All while Peter Wallace it felt it wasn't his place to say anything at all. Acting Premier, why do the McGinty Win Liberals get promotions for staying quiet? Before I, uh, before I go, I'm going to offer uh, a caution, uh, and that caution is the, uh, ex excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, the member from Lambton, Kent, Middlesex, uh, the member from L Lambton, Kent, Middlesex is con continuing to speak first when I was trying to say something and then when I was trying to get his attention. The Minister of Education will come to order. The, mem the member from um, Simcoe North will come to order. I'm going to offer a caution. I don't like some of the language, although I didn't quite find it par unparliamentary. I'm going to caution the member not to go any further with that kind of accusation. Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, uh, I didn't think it was possible. I didn't think it was possible for the member to go any lower, but he's just proven it in that question. Mr. Speaker, last Thursday, a document Walker. was made public, a court document, 
which contains allegations about the former Chief of Staff to Premier McGuinty. It's a voluminous document, Mr. Speaker, I understand over 100 pages. Everyone who's looked at it knows that it is very, very clearly about the former uh, Premier's watch, and the allegations are directed at Mr. Livingston. They are not proven. And, Mr. Speaker, to stand up here in the Legislature and to attempt to drag through the mud the names of hard-working staffers on this side of the House, Mr. Speaker, who were in no way implicated in that document, it makes it very, very clear, Mr. Speaker, is beneath him, Mr. Speaker. I thought that member was an honourable member, but what he just did, Mr. Speaker, is beyond beyond, Mr. Speaker, contempt, and I Thank cannot you. believe that he would have said that. Mr. Thank you. New question. The member from Scarborough Guildwood. Speaker, Speaker, my question today is for the Minister responsible for Seniors Affairs. Minister, on several occasions while addressing this legislature, you have provided up-to-date information on the implementation of the Retirement Homes Act 2010. Thanks to this important piece of legisla legislation, for the first time in Ontario, seniors living in retirement homes have strong protections under provincial law. Mr. Speaker, in Scarborough alone, there are 10 retirement homes, four of which are in my riding of Scarborough Guildwood, serving hundreds of senior residents. Minister, I know that you have been to several locations in Scarborough, and our seniors have welcomed you there. I know my constituents of Scarborough Guildwood appreciate this government's hard work to keep these residents safe and secure and involved in their local communities. Speaker, can the minister inform this House of some of the work conducted by the Retirement Homes Regulatory Authority? Question. Thank you. Minister responsible for Question. Seniors Affairs. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Speaker. It's indeed very refreshing to hear the uh, member from Scarborough Hill would uh, uh, speak with such passion and advocacy about our seniors. Uh, and it, the same goes for uh, all, all our seniors, Mr. Speaker. Let me say that since uh, its inception, uh, uh, we have uh, approved some 697 retirement home license speaker, and this speaks well for the regulatory authority. Uh, speaker, as well, we have to say that thanks to the uh, uh, present government, uh, seniors today are enjoying in their retirement homes uh, more safety, more protection than ever before. It means that the regulatory authority is working, Speaker, and we will continue to do so. Uh, since 2012 up to 2000 now, Speaker, we have received some 5,000 inquiries with respect to retirement homes. Uh, we continue to provide information on the conditions of all the retirement home speakers that is available to all the seniors and their families. They can access that information through the, uh, uh, the info line as well as the RHA, uh, RHRA, uh, .ca website, Speaker. Here, here. Two supplementary. Thank you, Speaker. I'd like to thank the Minister for that answer, and I know that families in my riding of Scarborough Guildwood are also thankful that this government has always been ready and willing to listen to the needs of our seniors. Speaker, the seniors of my riding, like thousands of seniors across Ontario, have worked so hard to build this great province. Like my parents, who emigrated from Jamaica, they arrived in Canada many years ago. They chose to make this their home right here in Ontario. They went straight to work, laying the foundations for the communities we live in today. Speaker, recently, the fifth phase of the Retirement Homes Act 2010 came into effect. Can the minister explain how these new regulations continue to build on the successful protections implemented Question. by our government? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Minister. Again, uh, Speaker, I want to thank the member for the question, and uh, she is quite right. Uh, uh, we have made quite a few uh, improvements since the act came into force. As a matter of fact, we have uh, just approved the phase five of the uh, retirement uh, regulatory authority, Speaker. And I have to say that thanks to the present uh, um, uh, government of Kathleen Wynne, seniors today are moving forward and they know that they can get better service, better quality, better care in a very safe environment. What are some of the changes that we have been proposing and coming from the uh, phase five speaker? We have established the Retirement Home Regulatory Authority Emergency Fund. We have mandatory insurance for each retirement home. 
we have established formal process for complaint handling by the RHRA, Answer. including complaint uh, review officer, a screening for staff and volunteer by the police, and as well, Speaker, we have created Thank an you. RHRA. Thank you. New question, the member for Prince Edward Hastings. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question this morning is for the acting premier. Your unelected, hand-picked Liberal premier knew when she ran for the leadership of your disgraced party that she was inheriting the contempt charges, she was inheriting the criminal activity that went along with it. Her predecessor fled the office like a coward. Yet, she stood on a stage, arm in arm, chanting the name Dalton as you did, even though that his reputation had been tarnished beyond belief. She knew that the gas plant scandal was the biggest scandal in Ontario's history, and it turns out the most expensive too. Yet she expects us to believe that she Order. knew nothing about the secret diabolical mission that was going on to destroy documents in her office when she was the Premier. Now, Minister, I know you have your own OPP investigation to contend with, but how can you continue to stand up for this government that's so embroiled in criminal activity? Thank you. Seated, please. Seated, please. Um, again, I'm going to offer a caution uh, to uh, making any accusations of criminal activity is not expected uh, from any member in this House. Uh, Deputy Premier. Uh, to the government House Leader, Speaker. You know, House Leader. Mr. Speaker, it really does insult the office that that member holds as a critic. Uh, that question, Mr. Speaker, was the worst kind of politics. And what we've seen here today, Mr. Speaker, is a progressive conservative party that doesn't care about facts. They don't give a damn about facts, Mr. Speaker. All they care about. Withdraw, please. Withdraw. Thank you. Mr. Thank Speaker, you. all they care about is scoring very cheap political points. The fact of the matter is, Mr. Speaker, that the reason why we are having this debate and discussion here is because a court document was made public last Thursday, and that court document is very serious, but it's very clear. It's about allegations that took place under the former Premier, Mr. Speaker, and it is directed. It's not proven, Mr. Speaker, and again, we have to be very careful at his former Chief of Staff, Mr. Livingston. But you know, Mr. Speaker, if the honourable member wants to talk about gas plants, then perhaps in the supplementary he'll tell us about the cost of the PCs when they stood on YouTube and promised that if they were elected, that those gas plants would be cancelled. Thank you. The member from uh, Oxford will withdraw. withdraw. Thank you. Supplementary. Mr. Speaker. Uh, back to the acting premier, and I don't know what the heck this government is going to do when that guy leaves, because somebody's actually going to have to answer a question over there. You know what? The, thing, uh, the, 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 the stink of this gas plant scandal is something this government can't outrun. They're trying to continue the cover-up as long as they can, Mr. Speaker, but they're not going to get away with it. You've got the same old McGinty cast of characters there. You know, these are the same people that stood up on the stage in January of last year and said they were going to continue the Dalton legacy. That's what they promised to do. And yes, Mr. Speaker, they've done an excellent job of it because it's already cost us over a billion dollars to cancel that gas plant. Anytime anyone brings this government's incompetence to light, what we get is a threat to sue, Questions? silence, and censure. Will you do the honourable thing? You said you'd stand on your record. Will you call the non-confidence motion today and let the public decide this once and for all? Before I, uh, before I turn, I, uh I offer an apology to the member from Oxford. I was incorrect, and uh, I uh, apologize. I will now ask the member from Nipissing to withdraw. Withdraw. <laughs> Order. Order. Thank you. Speaker, I'm not sure about my colleagues, but when I saw that uh, ridiculous display, I am quite proud of the fact that our Premier has sought and obtained legal advice. 
Mr. Speaker, the fact of the matter is that what we have seen from the opposition is this drive-by smear. Mr. Speaker, again, there was a document that was released by the courts last Thursday that makes it very clear that there were serious allegations, Mr. Speaker, that took place under the former Premier's watch. Again, Mr. Speaker, what does the Toronto Star have to say? On March 29th, a close reading of the 111 pages of OPP documents provides no hint of yet of any impropriety when Premier Wynne was Premier. Toronto Star, March 30th. Regarding Tim Hudak's claims about Premier Wynne, the OPP documents suggest no such thing. Mr. Speaker, it is time that the Progressive Conservatives came clean. Yes, Mr. Sir. Speaker, they apologized and they removed the offensive, the offensive language from their website and stopped spreading Thank you. these unbased fear smears questions the member from Scarborough Agent, Agent Court. Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Research and Innovation. Great Minister. Ontario is recognized for the many excellent academic and research institutions and the strong collaboration with the industry. To build to, on this further, we continue to create the right condition that will lead to innovative business climate that will attract uh, investment, create jobs, and increase the quality of life for Ontarians. <laughs> Fostering collaboration in this intensely competitive global economy is important and is also a competitive uh, advantage. To help to translate Ontario's research strength into uh, commercialized activities, business must be able to access world-class knowledge and expertise available in Ontario's <coughs> research institutions. Mr. Speaker, through you to the Minister of Research and Innovation, what step is the government taking to facilitate knowledge mobilization between the industry and academic institutions? Thank you, the Minister of Research and Innovation. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I would like to thank the member from Scarborough Aging Court for that very important question. Mr. Speaker, our government recognizes the importance of a strong relationship between academic and research institutions and also industry in our province. That's why our government created Collaboration Voucher Program, which provides re redeemable credits to small and medium-sized businesses for expertise and resources from Ontario's research and academic institutions and research hospitals. Collaboration Vouchers, Mr. Speaker, are a practical tool to facilitate knowledge mobilization between industry and academic institutions. Not only does this voucher program help businesses improve their competitiveness around the world and productivity in the marketplace, but it helps translate Ontario's research strengths into stronger innovation and commercial uh, activity in the future. Answer. I am proud, Mr. Speaker, that our government's initiatives to foster strategic collaboration and knowledge mobilization in our province of Ontario. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to hear that our government is undertaking a stronger collaboration between the innovative business and industry and academic institution. Ontario's research community is a globally recognized as commercial-friendly jurisdiction that supports the growth of innovative companies and activities. International research collaboration is a rapidly growing component of core research activities for all countries. They enable researchers to participate in networks of cutting-edge and innovative activity. Ontario is a home of many world-class researchers. They know collaboration provides opportunities to move further and faster by working in with others, leading people in the field. But in a global context, especially in the developing countries and economies, ramping up their research investments to achieve prominence in collaborating nationally and building international bridges. Mr. Speaker, through Question. to the Minister of Research and Innovation, can he please let us know what international partnerships and collaboration our government has undertaken to promote this research? Research. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank again the member from Scarborough Agent Corps for that question. Mr. Speaker, Ontario understands the importance of collaboration and building international bridges to remain competitive. Ontario has several active MOUs that focuses on promoting Ontario's strengths while attracting investments to Ontario. In fact, I had the pleasure of visiting China a couple of weeks ago with a focus of collaboration and collaborative opportunities in life sciences, information, and information technology, and clean technology. We announced that the next phase of our MOU between our government and the Ministry of Science and Technology of China. Under this MOU, a total of 12 academic and industry research and development collaboration projects are being funded by both our governments. As Ontario's second largest trading partner, China's emerging economy will remain a key factor in Ontario's international business strategy. 
Mr. Speaker, these partnerships these partnerships will lead Answer. to the generation of new technologies, attracting talent and international uh, investments into our province of Ontario and creating jobs for today and tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Your question, the member from the Key and Carleton. Thanks so very much, Speaker. Uh, please have the added opportunity today. Uh, my question is to the Acting Premier. Look, I don't know what is worse, the uh, Premier evading uh, this Assembly and not answering questions. <laughs> The, uh, the member knows full well we do not make reference to people's uh, presence or absence in this house. Don't do it again, please. John. I'm not sure what's worse, the fact that the Premier is avoiding uh, accountability or the fact that the NDP is refusing to hold this government to account. What's worse? So I'm going to try it one more time. Since they will not answer whether or not the Premier's hard drive was wiped, will the acting Premier afford us this opportunity in telling us whether or not the Premier's senior transition staff and all of her staff actually had any of their data wiped clean during that period of time? Thank you, Deputy Premier. To the government house leader. House leader. Mr. Speaker. I answered that question several minutes ago. The honourable member can look at the document that was released by the court, which talks about a series of computers, which allegations are about, Mr. Speaker. It does not include Premier Wynne, Mr. Speaker. It includes a list of individuals that's made very clear in that document. And, Mr. Speaker, I'll tell you what's really bad is the baseless allegations coming from the opposition. And I'll pick up on one point she made about the New Democrats, because it's not just against the Progressive Conservatives. Let me quote the Toronto Star, March 30th. The leader of the NDP indulged in conventional opposition mischief by implying police were, quote, now focusing on questions about the period after you were sworn in and became pre Premier, a clear misreading of the OPP documents. And it's kind of interesting, Mr. Speaker, the theatrics we saw from the New Democrats, because when the PCs tried the same thing in November 2009, the leader of the NDP said, Answer. quote, New Democrats Democrats believe that it's extremely important to bring the voices of the people into this legislature. I do not. I, I not only don't approve of their tactic Thank being you. the PCs, but it changes the channel for them. Thank Mr. you. Thank you. Supplementary. The NDP and the Liberals can play all the games that they want with the PR stunt by the Premier yesterday and the PR stunt by the, uh, by the NDP today. The only leader that is here committed to getting to the bottom of the gas plant scandal is Tim Hudak, leader of the official opposition. So, Premier, Acting Premier, I, I would like to know this. How much was Peter Fast, the outsider hired by the Liberals to dis deflete the public records paid? Was he paid from the Premier's office budget from the Liberal Party of Ontario? How much was he given to destroy these records under the Premier Wynne leadership? Uh, Excellent. Governor Nelson. Disgraceful. That's disgraceful. Mr. Speaker. As I said, many of the uh, issues that have been raised by the member have been dealt with in the court document. Mr. Speaker, in terms of the IT company that the honourable member is speaking of, we learned of the allegations on Thursday, as she knows. Following those uh, revelations, an internal investigation was conducted, and it was determined that the company has previously done occasional IT services work for the caucus office under the former premier and the party office. The company was informed yesterday that its services at the party office were terminated. The proper authorities have been proactively made aware. But to be clear, Mr. Speaker, the allegations center on the former chief of staff to Premier McGuinty. These are serious allegations. No one disputes that. But the fact of the matter is, Mr. Speaker, they are still allegations, and I would caution all members, all members, Mr. Speaker, to be very careful and to allow the police to do their work. Thank you. New question. The member from Mississauga Streetsville. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my question is to the Acting Premier. Acting Premier, I understand yesterday the Premier sent an open letter to the Leader of the Opposition. In the letter, the Premier asks the Leader of the Opposition, his caucus and his party to stop making false and defamatory allegations. Acting Premier, would you share with the House the contents of that letter? Deputy Premier. Uh, thank you, Speaker, and I would be happy to uh, read into the record the contents of this letter, uh, dated March 30, 2014, to uh, Mr. Tim Hudak. Dear Mr. Hudak, during your press conference on March 27, you made several false, 
misleading and defamatory allegations about me. Time. This is from the Premier. You allege that I personally quote, oversaw and possibly ordered the criminal destruction of documents, unquote, and that criminal conduct took place in my office. The Ontario Progressive Conservative Party repeated these false allegations on its website and in a public mailing. These allegations and accusations are false and utterly unsupported, Answer. and you ought to know it. Speaker, I will continue in the supplementary. Thank you, supplementary. Well, thank you to the Acting Premier for beginning to share that letter. From the day that she was sworn in, the Premier has opened up the government to an unprecedented exactly. degree. Exactly. Under the current Premier, the government has implemented mandatory record-keeping rules and staff training and new rules limiting political staff in, and their involvement in commercial third-party transactions. Right. Acting Premier, would you continue to share the contents of that letter? Thank you. Deputy Premier. Uh, thank you. The Premier goes on to say, as political leaders, it is our role and public duty to engage in spirited political debate on, on issues. The decision to relocate the gas plants and the facts related Order. to the ongoing police investigation are legitimate subjects for the, this political debate. False, misleading and defamatory statements are not, and they represent the worst kind of politics. Wow. That is why I'm writing this open letter to you. There should be no tolerance for false and defamatory accusations as a means to gain political power. I am asking you and your Remember Congress from Stormont, to, come to immediately order. stop repeating these untrue statements and to immediately remove them from the PC Party website and all other communications. I have sought and obtained legal and if steps are not taken immediately, I will have no choice but to make all necessary and Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Thank you. New question. The member from De and Carleton. As uh, my question is to the government house leader. Moments ago, the government house leader indicated that Peter Fast had a contract with the Liberal Party of Ontario. According to reality. On January 26, Kathleen Lynn became Premier, but also became leader of the Liberal Party. That means he was one of her contracted employees. Speaker, this revelation is quite serious in, in that it gives us more of an understanding into what is going on with this Liberal government. So I ask the government House Leader once more. Were members of the transition team and Kathleen Wynne's hard drives wiped clean, yes or no, by a contracted employee of the Liberal Party of Ontario Question. when Kathleen Wynne assumed the leadership of your party? Yeah, Mr. Speaker, I, I think this stretch is longer than a Leonard Cohen song. I mean, the fact of the matter, Mr. Speaker, the fact of the matter is, Mr. Speaker, that last Thursday a court document was made public. And Mr. Speaker, I would invite the honourable. I believe it's on the Toronto Star website. I know you have to pay a, a certain fee every month to access it, but Mr. Speaker, I would invite her to read that because it outlines a number of computers and it names those staff of the former Premier, Premier McGuinty, that were in fact. According to this document, wipe clean. There are allegations about the former chief of staff. These are unproven allegations, Mr. Speaker, and I think all of us should allow the uh, police to do their work. But in terms of, Mr. Speaker, the Premier's transition team, I would point out to the honourable member that the committee has Answer. received information, the Justice Committee, and emails from the Premier's transition te team, and again, she should read those documents. As I say, Mr. Speaker, the court document makes Thank clear you. what computers are talking about, and it's staff. Thank you. Former Premier McGuinty. Supplementary. Thank you. The, I'm sure that the minister is well aware that I was the first person to bring the revelations to the floor of this assembly. We're quite aware, aware of what are in, what's in the ITO. I asked this this uh, minister for for very specific Order. details. He is choosing not to provide them. I would ask the, the minister one more time: Would he provide the assembly, the committee? And the leader of the official opposition, with the nature of the contract for Peter Face from the Liberal Party of Ontario. Thank you. 
Member Hauslinger. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Thank you. Member, Member from Dufferin Caledon, come to order. Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, uh, both the caucus office and party require significant IT services, both to support staff to communicate with Ontarians. My understanding is the company performed IT services like routine maintenance. But, Mr. Speaker, again, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I invite I invite the member to take a look at the court document that was released last Thursday, Mr. Speaker. And that document clearly outlines allegations, Mr. Speaker, unproven allegations against the former Chief of Staff. And in terms of the current Premier, Mr. Speaker, she was the one who worked, I can tell you, as House Leader, to open up a very broad a committee with a very broad mandate, with a great deal of power. Mr. Speaker, we have provided yes, some 326,000 documents to that committee, including documents and emails from the transition team. And again, Thank Mr. You. Speaker, she should read them. Question, member from Glengarry Prescott Russell. Thank you very much, Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Infrastructure and Transportation, or Transportation and Infrastructure. Uh, Speaker, I drive about uh, 1,500 kilometres a week, and I know that Ontario roads are among the safest in North America. And while it's important that we continue to keep our roads safe, while aiming to keep our seniors driving as long as they can, and they do so safely. Uh, recently, uh, Minister, your ministry announced changes to the seniors' driving tests, and I know that seniors in my riding have received this news quite well, and many still have questions about exactly what those changes are. Speaker, through you, I'm just asking the minister, can, can you please speak to these changes and how it will affect seniors in Ontario? Thank you. Minister of Infrastructure and Minister of Transportation. Thanks uh, very much. I have to be very careful, Mr. Speaker, because my mother, I can't give her age because she'll really get upset with me, but suffice to say my mother's a woman of a certain age and she's watching what I'm saying, so I better be on my best behaviour today. But uh, she is someone who does not drive at night now. Uh, she gave up her car she, she, when she moved to the city so uh, she could be close to myself and the rest of the family to take care of her. But if she decided, and my mother is a, a woman of some substantial will, that she wanted to renew her driver's license again, and she has kept it. And I, I, I commend the Premier when she introduced uh, uh, equivalent to the driver's licenses so people like my mom can, can have a license. She would take a vision test. Uh, she would undergo a driver record review, and she would attend group education sessions as well as complete two in-class screening exercises. So these are easier, less stressful, Answer. less threatening uh, solutions, and we really look forward to, I think, an easier system for our moms and dads and our grandparents. It's more safe. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker, and thank you, Minister, for that answer. Uh, both my mother and father are uh, seniors, and I recall quite well uh, my mother knocking my mirror off of my vehicle in the driveway. So uh, I just wanted to throw that in. Um, She's watching. Uh, speaker, I'm pleased to hear about the changes to the process, and uh, many seniors share uh, the desire to drive for as long as they can and as safely as well. So uh, the old program was onerous, that I well know, and caused many of the seniors in my area a fair amount of stress. Many of the enhancements to the program are quite similar to the previous renewal process for seniors, but I do notice that we're shortening how long the entire process will take for seniors. Speaker, through you to the minister, can uh, the minister please explain on why that is and what you've enhanced, and will this result Question. in any new fees to our seniors? Thank you, minister. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Um, I. I once lived in the member from Glengarry Prescott Russell's constituency because um, my, my mother and father nearly ended their relationship over my father's acquisition of half a bull and my mother didn't realize she thought she wasn't going to have room in the freezer for it until I heard the word artificial insemination where my sister and I were sent away from the dinner table for the rest of my parents' conversation. But I know in that constituency and many others, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, it gets dark, and there are many areas of Glengarry, Proscat, Russell, and rural communities that don't have uh, the kind of lighting. And as your eyes get a little more challenged as you get older, it's important. So that there will no longer be these complicated tests that people have to study for. Um, they will simply very stressful, as the Attorney General has just pointed out. 
Uh, they, they will just simply be able to come and do a, a short classroom test that won't require much. And as you know, with legislation uh, before the House, first of all, there's no fees, as the health minister just pointed out, none. And second of all, we're also looking at graduated driver's licenses for seniors as well, Mr. Speaker, if we thank pass you. the legislation for the House. Thank you. The, uh, minute, the government house leader on a, uh, on a point of order. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I wish to uh, correct my record. Earlier in question period, I referred to uh, the current Premier before she had assumed office. I got a bit tongue-tied and said, uh, incoming or acting, I, of course, Mr. Speaker, meant Premier-designate at that point. The Minister of Finance on a point of order. Mr. Speaker, I seek unanimous consent that the question on the motion of second reading of Bill 177, an act to amend the Legislative Assembly Act, be immediately put forward without further debate or amendment, and that the bill be ordered for third reading, and that the order of the third reading of Bill 177 be immediately called, and that the question on the motion for third reading of the bill be put without debate or amendment. Yeah, good idea. Three, three. The Minister of the Minister of Finance is seeking unanimous consent to be to, that the question on the motion of second reading of Bill 177, an act to amend the Legislative Assembly Act, be immediately put without further debate or amendment, and that the bill be ordered for third reading, and that the order of the third reading, the Bill 177, be immediately called, and that the question on the motion for third reading of the bill be put without debate. Do we agree? No. I heard a no. The, the, the member, the minister. The Minister of Government Services on a point of order. On a point of order. I realized uh, I forgot to introduce some elected officials here today from the City of Pickering. We have Doug Dickerson, Deputy Mayor, and Kevin Ash, uh, Councillor for Ward 1. Welcome to Queen's Park. Thank you. The uh, member from Simcoe Gray on a point of order. Yes, uh, Mr. Speaker, I seek unanimous consent that the sponsorship of Bill 5, an act to freeze compensation for two years in the public sector, be transferred to the member for Nip Nip Nipissing. The member for Simcoe Gray is seeking unanimous consent to that the sponsorship of Bill 5, an act to freeze compensation for two years in public sector, be transferred to the member from Nipissing. Do we agree? No. I heard a no. The, uh, the minister responsible for senior affairs uh, on a point of order. Uh, speaker, I would really be happy if I could have a late show on the question uh, that I That's not a point of order. <laughs> there are no further there are no there are no deferred votes. This house stands recess until one PM this afternoon.